This is her last lesson in Sociology 333 for this semester. Yes, yes, I know you are glad. At first glance it may appear to cover a lot of ground, but rest assured, it isn't too much, and all of it is interesting and important. By the way I brought my latest invention, my genius robot, who I have tried to program to solve any human problem. I have uploaded years and years of advice into his brain, from Dr. Phil. So he should be absolutely infallible. I have named him Aristotle. No, sling boo, boo. Alrighty then, we begin with chapter 22, the juvenile justice system. As I mentioned in last lesson's mini lecture, juvenile courts vary quite a bit, often from county to county in the same state. The questions Angu and Brezina address in this chapter are very important, as we try to improve our juvenile justice system nationwide. Pay attention to... Please crump, crump, and my bum. Yes, Aristotle. Yes. Anyway, pay attention to the discussion of how small amounts of discrimination at different points in the juvenile justice system add up. It probably won't come as a surprise that the question of why minorities are overrepresented in juvenile courts and correction systems comes up. Now, what can be done about it? Gone long. Windsock. Don't worry, students. I won't ask you to solve all the problems today, only to be aware of the existence of, and danger for, further discrimination against certain groups in juvenile courts. I do hope one day you find yourself part of the solutions. If you end up working as a social worker or counselor, for example. Zingy. Poo poo. When the question arises, does the juvenile justice system discriminate against the poor and against males or females? You should also ask yourself if the adult criminal court system discriminates against the poor and against certain groups. Roji. Okay, we move then into a discussion of the strategies of deterrence and incapacitation. You all have opinions on this, I'm sure. Get tough measures are popular in political campaigns, especially in areas where adults fear children. Parts of Chicago make for a great example. But is it a good strategy to punish more juvenile offenders and punish them more harshly? Or to punish more consistently and effectively? Commercial. No, Aristotle. We have no time for the commercial. You will recognize these questions from earlier in the textbook we are using, and they are questions that do not go away. Music? Yes. Yes, Aristotle. We can have some music. I imagine that for your entire lives, the debate over how to best punish juvenile offenders and protect society against the most violent of them will continue. Your reminder is in order. Pay attention to what the U.S. Supreme Court does when considering cases involving juvenile justice. And by the way, pay attention to these terms. Specific deterrence and general deterrence. Nibbit, 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 swamp. In chapter 24 you get a brief history of prevention and rehabilitation. These are easy concepts to understand, but difficult things to accomplish in the real world. I speak from experience. We're getting back to the very beginning of our text here, looking at the philosophical underpinnings of juvenile court in America. Several types of programs are mentioned in this chapter. You'll note that one size does not fit all. Right. And finally we reach the end of our text with chapter 25 which poses the question, what should we do to reduce delinquency? I always joke in this class that if you can answer that question definitively, once and for all, you will all go on Oprah and make a fortune, and the world will live happily ever after. When you're going, jelly jelly jelly, please no more Dr. Phil for Aristotle. But seriously I do like the way our textbook ends, because I agree that more emphasis should be placed on prevention and rehabilitation than on harsh punishment. You counselors used to say, when program monies were in jeopardy that, you can spend the money now or later or more prisons. Deep. Frog. Chuck. Chuck. I also like the practice of holding juveniles accountable for their negative actions, and having them make restitution. My experience has been that parties who have been victims of juveniles are often amenable to having the juvenile make appropriate amends and restitution. Suck 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 it. To. Me. What? Oh. Yes well. Many of us don't want to see young people not get a chance to learn from their mistakes. After all where would any of us be if we never got a second or third chance in life? Tree. Cat. Greek. No. Paddle. I'm not arguing that just saying you're sorry after committing a crime is enough. But I am in favor of living in a society that sees young people as our most valuable natural resource. Literally our future. And a society that does everything possible to help young people learn to make better decisions and become responsible law-abiding citizens. I think the work of restitution helps young people quite often more than the fear of punishment merely aimed at incapacitation. Rollo. Force. Sandwiches. What do you think? Let us all know on the discussion forum for this or last lesson. Hi. Bye. I want to thank you all again for taking the course. It's been my pleasure to guide you through the material, and I appreciate your doing the work required and helping each other understand the material. 
These are very difficult tissues that won't go away. And as I said early on, we will all deal with young people in some capacity or capacities during our lives. There may still be more questions than answers, but I sincerely hope taking this course and learning the four theories presented will help you understand young people more and understand yourselves more deeply. Thirsty, hungry, hot, dog. Best of luck to all of you as you pursue your undergraduate degrees, and congratulations to all you seniors nearing graduation. You're an inspiration to others who need to see you succeed and complete your degree. To the rest of you, you will be seniors soon too, and then out in the real world, using your education to help others. Stay in touch with me and share your successes and challenges with me. I care about you, and consider it an honor to have been a part of your lives for a brief time. Sniff. Snore. We be Aristotle. Now get out there and ace those final exams. And then have fun but be safe. You know I was going to say that, right? Safe. Safe. Full. Care. Yes, what he said. Yeah. Oh yeah. Boogie. Oogie. Oogie. Get down. Yes. 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 Education helps students. Yes. Students help others. Yes. Aristotle. Yes. <laughs>